Good evening, and welcome to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm Nicodemus, and I will be your host as we take a look at the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. And remember, none of this is financial advice. And it's Sunday, April 2nd, 2023. Both crypto trading and crypto exchanges have become unprofitable due to high tax rates on a low threshold of $125 per financial year. At least, that's how it is in India these days. The Indian tax authorities have collected approximately $19 million in taxes deducted at the source, or TDS. Now, these are taxes on the transfer of virtual digital assets collected up until March 20th, according to an announcement made by the Minister of State for Finance last Tuesday. This amount can be considered the final figure for the entire 2022 to 23 fiscal year. That's because their fiscal year ended on March 31st. The Indian government introduced a new tax regime for crypto transactions in the 2022 to 2023 budget. It imposed a 1% tax on digital asset transfers of over $125 in a financial year. And that's not sales, and that's not purchase. That's just transferring something you already owned. You can be taxed for that. And there's a 30% income tax on all gains from digital assets. So the 1% tax went into effect on July 1st last year. Now last November, the minister stated that the tax collection on transfers during the period from July 1st to November 1st was approximately $7.4 million. Industry howled in pain and asked the Indian government to at least cut the tax rate in half. The Indian government did not provide their citizens with any relief. Later on, crypto transactions were included in the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. This decision drew praise from industry representatives, which is not too surprising as it provided some clarity, which is a welcome change from their lack of clear regulations. It sure would be nice to have some regulatory clarity in the US. However, Due to the high taxes and an unfavorable regulatory environment, India's growing crypto ecosystem started to lose its edge to more friendly jurisdictions like the UAE and Singapore. A study by NASCOM revealed that 60% of India's 450 Web3 startups are registered outside of India. However, the report also noted that India has a large talent pool, representing 11% of the global market. That makes it well-equipped to lead the Web3 transformation. According to Statista's latest data, India has 150 million crypto users. By the end of 2023, India's crypto adoption rate may surpass that of the UK and the US, with 11% of the population having tried digital asset transactions. Last month was the G20's finance minister and central bank governors meeting. And as India is the G20 president, they hosted the meeting. Discussions about crypto regulations were prominent, and it appears that the powerful economic bloc will have some sort of regulation in place for the cryptocurrency sector by the end of this year. Okay, if you're still with me, I'd like to take just a second to ask you to like, follow, and subscribe to the show. It makes a huge difference in getting exposure. Okay, back to it. On to our cover story. The crypto markets are a little unsettled at the moment. Of course, you can pretty much say that any time. It certainly doesn't help now, though, with the U.S. government paper-handing Bitcoin that they should be hodling. Because recent court documents state that the feds sold Bitcoin and brought in more than $215 million. The crypto sold was from the Silk Road Marketplace. A hacker named James Zong stole it, and police took it in a historic seizure. U.S. authorities have started selling it, and they still have 41,490 Bitcoins left to sell around $1.1 billion of crypto that they should be holding on to. The document filed on Friday said that the government has started liquidating the 51,352 Bitcoin that was forfeited in the Albrecht case. The government sold 9,861 Bitcoin on March 14, 2023, for a total of $215,738,154.98. So, after paying $215,738.15 in transaction fees, the net proceeds to the government were $215,522,416.83. 
Now, the Albrecht case pertains to Ross Albrecht, the founder of Silk Road, who was sentenced to life in prison in 2015 in a high-profile case. Silk Road was an online black market. Some people used it to buy and sell illegal drugs. That is, until the authorities shut it down back in 2014. Last year, James Zong pled guilty to wire fraud. The government accused him of manipulating the Silk Road transaction system in 2012 to pocket 50,676 Bitcoin. He kept the stash hidden for 10 years, and its value ballooned to $3.3 billion. The prosecutors mentioned in Friday's filing that the defendant had multiple computer servers, virtual private networks, and other things that he used to commit his crimes. He was able to keep the Bitcoin protected and his identity hidden for several years. The authorities plan to sell the remaining Bitcoin in four batches throughout 2023. Considering the brutal bear market, it's unclear how this might impact the price of the world's biggest digital asset. So the other night, we were talking about Justin's son and his status as ambassador for Grenada. Well, on Friday, the founder of the Tron blockchain made an announcement. He said that his term as Grenada's ambassador to the World Trade Organization was ending. Earlier that day, he shared screenshots of an internal registration system, claiming that he was still a diplomat. On Twitter, he wrote that he would be focusing on handing over his duties to his successor in the coming months. After that, he plans to take some time off before continuing his career as a public servant with a focus on the digital economy and crypto regulation. According to the Grenada Broadcasting Network, Justin Sun had his ambassador status stripped away after the elections in June, after the new National Party was defeated by the National Democratic Congress. Sun had been made as WTO ambassador by the Grenadian government in December of 2021. He has since referred to himself as His Excellency on social media, which I can't blame him for. If I had a cool title, I'd probably be using it too. Sun said that he made progress in negotiations and policy advocacy during his time as ambassador. He wrote that serving as the head of Grenada's delegation at the 12th Ministerial Conference was a highlight of his tenure as an ambassador. He said that he was pleased to have addressed the conference and spoken with the representatives from around the world about trade issues. In a follow-up message, Sun said that he had only recently learned of the changes to his status, which is just kind of weird to think about, right? Given Sun's diplomatic status and location, speculation has arisen in light of pending legal issues. The U.S. Securities Exchange Commission charged Justin Sun and three of his companies, including Tron Foundation Limited. They were charged with the unregistered offer and sale of two crypto asset securities. The use of Bitcoin is increasing worldwide. We were talking just last night about two countries that have made Bitcoin legal tender. That said, physical ATMs that convert fiat currency to Bitcoin are going away. In March, over 3,600 crypto ATMs were removed from the network, leaving around 33,000. Since the first Bitcoin ATM was launched in 2013, the number of cryptocurrency machines installed and removed each month has usually been positive. That was an indicator that the total number of crypto ATMs worldwide was growing. However, data from Coin ATM Radar shows that this trend is now reversing. Between September of 2022 and March of 2023, the number of new crypto ATMs being installed has been decreasing. In March of 2023, the decline was particularly significant, with 3,620 crypto ATMs being taken offline. This decline is noteworthy. By way of comparison, the largest number of crypto ATMs ever installed on a single month was 2048 in January of 2021. April brought good news for the crypto ATM industry with the installation of 37 new machines on April 1st. This reversed a three-month period of decline. The leading companies in the manufacturing of these ATMs are General Bytes, BitAccess, and Genesis Coin. Unfortunately, General Bytes experienced a security incident in March, an incident that saw their customers' hot wallets accessed, resulting in the loss of customer funds. However, the company has promised to reimburse those losses. 
General Bites made a statement saying that they've taken immediate action to stop any unauthorized access to their systems and are working hard to protect their customers. According to documentation, developers are now permitted to fork the Uniswap version 3 protocol. That's because its business source license, or BSL, expired on April 1st. And the people in DeFi space have been waiting on this for a while because it allows developers to create their own decentralized exchange. The BSL license type lasts for a restricted time period before becoming entirely open source. Its purpose is to protect the creator's right to earn profits from their inventions. In 2021, Uniswap's V3 license was introduced and prevented the code from commercial use for two years. Currently, the protocol is covered under the general public license. If developers want to fork the code, they must use an additional use grant. This exemption is created to serve the needs of both open source and commercial developers. Uniswap is the most popular automated market maker in the DeFi industry. It allows token creators, traders, and liquidity providers to exchange tokens on the Uniswap platform. Investors often use its native Uniswap token to enter the DeFi market. According to a report from May 2021, Uniswap V3 surpassed Bitcoin in daily fee generation. And keep in mind, that was right after launch. CryptoFeed's data shows that Uniswap V3 was generating $4.5 million in daily fees, whereas Bitcoin was producing $3.7 million. This month, after more than 55 million token holders voted for a governance proposal, Uniswap officially launched on the Binance's BNB chain. As a result, Uniswap users can now trade and swap tokens within the Binance chain's ecosystem. The integration also enabled Uniswap to join a liquidity pool with the chain's DeFi developer community. Brian Armstrong thinks that we should not press the pause button on the development of AI tools. ChatGPT has captivated headlines of late. In fact, even squeezing crypto out of the news. So it's no surprise that many people have strong opinions about AI, including Elon Musk, Steve Wozniak, and Andrew Yang. These individuals have signed a letter asking for the development of AI systems to stop. Press pause. There are some new systems being developed that are expected to be more powerful than GPT-4. However, not everyone thinks that this is a good idea. That said, Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, he's not one of those people. He thinks that halting development on these systems is a bad idea. Armstrong tweeted that there are no experts, that there's nobody qualified to decide whether the development of AI tools should stop or not. He thinks that many people will never agree on the issue. Armstrong also said, quote, committees and bureaucracy won't solve anything. He believes that even though there are dangers associated with many technologies, we should keep making progress because the benefits outweigh the risks. Armstrong thinks that when people share their ideas, better outcomes are achieved compared to when there's a central authority in control. He warned against letting fear prevent progress. He advocates caution when dealing with anyone trying to control everything centrally. The letter advocating for a six-month pause had over 1,100 signatures, including those of Chris Larson, co-founder of Ripple, Yashua Bengio, winner of the Turing Prize, Stuart Russell, the director of the Center for Intelligent Systems, and Imad Mustak, CEO of Stability AI. Many people in the industry believe that AI development should be restricted due to significant risks to society and humanity. Some people have speculated about the reasons behind the big names who signed the letter. Savak Sethi used to be a product head for NFTs at MasterCard, and he tweeted that it's ironic how many of the signatories have personal interest in AI and might be trying to slow down their competition so they can get ahead. Sethi also likened it to a non-proliferation treaty, but for AI. OpenAI's ChatGPT has gained popularity quickly but some people have raised concerns about its negative aspects. Italy's Data Protection Agency has announced that it is temporarily blocking ChatGPT due to suspected violations of data privacy rules. 
The agency has also ordered OpenAI to limit data processing immediately for users in Italy. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. If you enjoyed tonight's show, then please like, follow, subscribe, leave a rating or a review. And in the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow night.